Hi, I'm Sam Ben Yaakov. This presentation is entitled The PWM Resonant Converter Explained. In recent years, we've seen a number of uh, papers written by Professor Chuck and co workers about a step down DC to DC converter. This converter is also covered by a patent, a US patent, and the paper was published in a number of uh, trade journals, uh, internet posts. As far as I know, it was not published as yet in a peer-reviewed journal. So the objective of this presentation is really to explain this topology, how it works, and what's behind it. So the topology of this converter is shown here. It consists of two switches. This is the input. Uh, these work one at a time. Uh, a resonant capacitor, two resonant inductors, and two diodes. This is the output section. Uh, filter and this is the load. Now shown here are two diodes, but these could be actually replaced by two switches too. Um, the diode of course makes it simpler, uh, but the losses will be higher. I'm going to use this configuration with the diode just for the sake of simplicity. Later on I'll discuss the issue of losses, then I'll uh, talk about replacing these by switches. In the papers published by Professor Chuck, there is also a data about efficiency. Here is a efficiency for output power up to say 200 watts, and efficiency is fairly high. At one point here it's 99.5 percent, but this is for one transfer ratio, voltage transfer ratio of 2 to 1. This is 48 to 24. This is very significant. I'll talk about it uh, later on. Let me start off with something which is, let's call it prior art, and this is a switched capacitor converter. A step down, two to one switch capacitor converter, very well known for many, many years, probably 20, 30 years uh, already. Now we have here a capacitor, this is the so-called flying capacitor. We have four switches in this configuration, S1 and S1 here work together as well as S2. And this configuration is for a 2 to 1 transfer ratio. So let's see how it works when S1 and S1 are on. We are connecting the input via the capacitor to the output. So we have V out is V in minus V of uh, voltage of the capacitor. And then uh, when the S2 pair are on, we are actually connecting the capacitor in parallel to the output, V out is equal to Vc, from which we find that V out is half V in. So this is a step down 2 to 1 switch capacitor converter. Now, as I've said, this converter has been known for many, many years. In fact, there are many ICs, uh, integrated circuit, uh, that you can build this converter around them. One of them th is the LM2660. It has four switches, and I'm showing here the connection 1, 3, 1, 3, and then 2 and 4 are actually connected together. So by configuring it, this is the flying capacitor, this is this capacitor, by configuring it, you can get a uh, 2 to 1 converter, in fact, you can also get a doubler by a different uh, reconnection. Now, the two transistors or the two switches here can be replaced by diodes because, as it turns out, these diodes will turn on when required and will be in the off state when not required. For example, when S1 is on, current is flowing this direction, output voltage here is V out, so this diode is reverse bias and will not conduct. And on the other hand, when S2 is on, uh, this voltage is zero or voltage drop of a diode. So this uh, diode here is again reverse bias, so it's not conducting, so it's not interfering. So you can replace the two switches by the two diodes, and this is what we have seen uh, at the beginning. Now this topology suffers from high losses due to two reasons. One, if the currents are very picky, depending on the relationship between the RC, R will be, or the resistance will be the ESR of the capacitance, capacitance the resistance of the switches, ESR of the output uh, capacitor, and the relationship between the RC and the frequency 
you'll get uh, the shape of this current, this is the time constant, and it'll be typically very picky, and therefore the RMS is very high, and therefore the losses uh, on the conduction losses will be very high. Also, you have hard switching, because as you turn on CS1, current is starting to flow, so there are uh, switching losses, uh, conduction losses due to the high RMS, so therefore uh, this is usually uh, a low efficiency converter. You can improve it, and this has been shown for many, many converters. I haven't seen it for this particular one with two inductors. Here I'm showing two inductors, and you can improve it by adding resonant inductors such that when the switch S1 is conducting, you will have here a resonant circuit, C and L1, and therefore you will build up a sinusoidal current waveform. Here I'm showing this is, this is when S1 is on, a sinusoidal waveform, and if the timing is right, then you can turn it on and off in zero current switching. And also the RMS is of a, a sinusoidal waveform, which is not too bad, it's not like the picky um, RC uh, discharge that we've seen before. So this is a very convenient and well-known uh, method to improve the efficiency of a switch capacitor converter by adding a resonant feature to it, and in this case by having two resistors. You can again get high efficiency at the 2 to 1 conversion ratio. This is the ratio that we have calculated, the natural ratio, voltage ratio of this converter, and I'll talk about it a little bit later uh, in more uh, detail. Now, as you can see, the circuit that we came up with is exactly the circuit uh, published by Professor Chuck. This is the same circuit. So this is basically a step-down, 2 to 1, switch capacitor converter with resonant inductor. That's what it is. So the question now is, why is it that the efficiency of a regular switch capacitor converter is high or could be high when you have the right transfer ratio, and when you are trying to control it, the efficiency will go down. This is very important to understand because this is a feature of the topology we are talking about, uh, as we'll see later on. So. Let's consider this again, basic switch capacitor converter, step down 2 to 1, and here's the flying capacitor. And now I'm looking at the two currents. This is the current when S1 is on, this is I1, and this is the current when S2 is on. I'm talking about average current. Let's say it's average over a switching period. Now obviously, the current through the the average current through the capacitor must be zero because um, there is no DC current through a capacitor at steady state. So therefore I1 is equal to I2 to some current and therefore the output current which is the sum of these two, here we have this one and this one accumulating at the output while at the input we have only I1, then the output current is twice I in. So it is very important to realize that this converter, or any other switch capacitor converter in fact, has a fixed current gain that you cannot change. This is fixed by the topology. The topology fixes the gain ratio between input and output. This is the thing that is fixed in this configuration. From this we can find that P in, which is I1 over V in, P out, sum of the current times V out, we can find the efficiency, P out over P in, which turns out to be 2 V out over V in. So if V out is indeed V in over 2, we get an efficiency of 1. But the efficiency will drop if V out is lower than V in over 2, that is if you are trying to control this circuit. Or we can put it in another way, Efficiency turns out to be V out over VT. VT is the so-called target voltage. In our case, it's half V in. So if VT is half V in, 
efficiency will be high or could be high, of course, depending on the circuit, the uh, positive resistances, etc., RMS current, but it could reach high values. But if you are trying in any other way by duty cycle or anything in this circuit to change V out, you are bound to get a lower efficiency. This is an inherent characteristic of a switch capacitor converter. The question is, what can be done? How to sort of untie this Gordic knot that we have here, which sets up the efficiency to be high only for one particular point. And the key is, is to change this. That is, if I can change that I out will be different from twice I in in this particular case, then I have a chance of getting higher efficiency uh, for different output voltages. How can we do that? So we have to somehow inject a current here, which is not passing through this capacitor. That is, we'll have the I1 here, the I2 here as before, but then we'll have this extra current which is breaking this relationship and thereby giving us the opportunity to control the output. So let's have a look what happens with this particular circuit when the duty cycle is not 50% or more importantly, when say the timing of S1 is shorter than half the period of the resonant circuit. So S1 is on, here we have S1 in on, the resonant current starts to build up and then we turn off S1, we turn it off. Current is flowing here, we turn it off. So we stop it here, doesn't go all the way as the resonant waveform, but rather the current will now lock into here between these two diode or a diode plus a uh, transistor. So in this case, we see that we have an extra current, actually. This is this energy locked in this inductor, this current coming from here. It's not passing through this capacitor. We had a, a current I1 and I2 as before, and then we have this extra current, as we have just said, is the key to improving efficiency when you are controlling the gain. So in this case, I out, is not twice I in, I in plus I in, but with another term here, this extra current which drops linearly if you assume that these two diodes have a constant uh, voltage uh, over them and then there's a constant voltage here, so there's a constant voltage over the inductor, so the current will drop linear linearly. So this is a feature that we have here which give us a opportunity to indeed control uh, the circuit and change the output voltage without a penalty as we have seen before in the regular switch capacitor converter in which uh, the relationship is just this two without this value that you need if you change the output voltage. However, once you do this, there are some problems. Number one, you don't have soft switching here because you turn off this switch, you turn it off when there is a current, okay? So there's no more zero current switching here. Also, this current now is locked through these two diodes. Indeed, you can replace these two by transistors, but you cannot have these two transistors on during this timing. Only one will be on, and you'll have a diode of the other transistor. So at least one diode will be contacting. So this is an extra uh, loss due to the voltage drop uh, on the diode. So what are the conclusions of this discussion here? The PWM resonant topology is, in fact, a resonant switch capacitor converter with a 2 to 1 transfer ratio. High efficiency is indeed expected at a 2 to 1 voltage ratio, that is when the output is the target voltage. When the ratio is off the 2 to 1, you can control it. It'll be better than a switch capacitor converter like a 
without resonant, but there are some added losses due to the hard switching and the uh, current through the diode. Unfortunately, we do not have any information about efficiency of this converter at voltage transfer ratio, which are other than two to one, they were not uh, reported as yet. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I hope you found it interesting and it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.